I probably sound a little crazy, but it's all right. Howdy, hey. How you doing, baby? You good? You straight? You sure? All right, now. So today is day two. I'm just now leaving the gym. <laughs> and I am most definitely leaving the gym solo because my brother let me know yesterday that uh, he don't work out on the weekends. <laughs> it is Sunday. Um, I got my membership. I bought my membership on Friday and I started on Saturday and he came with me yesterday or whatever because he is trying to actively do two a days. So he did come with me yesterday, but um, he asked me last night, he was like, you going to the gym? And I was like, yeah, I said, I'm paying for it. I'm going. <laughs> and I only did day one. I got to go for day two. I can't, I can't not go. He was like, oh, well, shit, you probably about to be by yourself because, uh, <laughs> Cause I don't go to the gym on the weekends. I said, that's cool. That's fine. It's, ain't no thing again. This is all about me. This ain't about nobody else. But I will tell you this. It's very easy when it seems like you may have somebody doing something with you or whatever. It's very easy to adopt what they are doing. Because let me tell you, it was several times when he was like... <laughs> After he had said what he said, I was like, well, you know what I mean? Tomorrow is Sunday. I could just, you know, I did get a good workout in. It's my first time. I want to hurt myself. But it's like, no. Again, remember who you're doing this for. Remember why you're doing what you're doing. It can't be about anybody else and what they're doing. It has to be about you. So I'm here to give a little bit of motivation to anybody who is on their journey doing anything for them. It don't have to be working out, baby. It could be anything. Anything that you are specifically doing just for you. And say, for instance, you got started with people or you had a lot of motivation, outside motivation in the beginning and it might be kind of like wearing off or whatever. Don't stop doing what you're doing, babe. Keep on doing what you're doing because it's going to work out for the greater good of you. It ain't going to work out for the greater good of nobody else because what you eat don't make them shit and vice versa. So you got to do what you got to do for you. But I feel really good. I felt really good yesterday after um, working out and uh, after I had that good pump, I was tired. I definitely was tired, but I had so much to do. I had to wash my one-year-old's hair. I still got to braid my two-year-old's hair. I still need to go to the store to get stuff to do my oldest daughter's hair. I had to wash clothes. I ended up cooking. I ended up doing dishes like three times yesterday. Yeah, it was a lot going on, <laughs> but when I finally hit that pillow, baby, I was out. I was done. I was down for the count. Couldn't nobody tell me nothing. But let me tell you what happened yesterday. So after me and my brother come from the gym, my dad was already outside. Like we pulled up to the house at the same time. My dad was already outside. He was cleaning off on um, the tarp and the pool that the kids had. And he was just, uh, he just kind of caught me off guard because he was like, how are you doing? And he was specifically talking to me and I was like, I'm okay. And he was like, okay, well, how are you doing, you know, overall, like your overall mental, how is your mental doing or whatever? How are you holding up? My dad's never really asked me that before. To be honest, nobody really asked me that. So for him to ask me, I was just like, okay, I mean, I'm, I'm okay, I'm good. And then I kind of just went to this whole spiel of just breaking down how I really felt because I never really get the opportunity to say that to anybody nobody asked me that question like that I'm usually the one asking people questions like that um but we had a good conversation and then he was like well how are your finances going and then I broke that down to him a little bit you know let him know how things were moving around and um he let me know because my dad is getting that itchy and it's like it comes around ever so often and this is another reason why I feel like my dad's either going to have dementia or um alzheimer's because he he just gets this itch every now and again like we already talked about this situation <laughs> but here you come again but anywho he was just like um yeah so that lady over there with those apartments where your brother at now they got three of them open over there i was like three he said yeah he said now nah, it's just your um your brother over there and like these older ladies that stay over there's like two older ladies or old ladies, I would say, that live over there, and that's it. And he was like, you know, I went over there, and I looked around again. He said, it don't really look like 
much riffraff is is hanging around and stuff like it was before and it looked pretty decent and i'm thinking to myself like but you told me <laughs> before that you didn't want us going over there because of the way that it looked you didn't want your grandkids over there you didn't want me over there you just didn't want us over there and now because he decided to mention he was like you know for me i can get a lot more out of the women that i fool with if y'all weren't here because it kind of makes them feel away when they hear and they doing stuff or if they come here and i ask them to do something or they're, they're doing things for me it makes them feel away because y'all are here and i was just like it shouldn't make them feel away if they would you know focused on you and whatever's going on with you or whatever but i mean i get it i was like okay whatever but i just knew where the conversation was going it was headed back into that place of i'm starting to miss having my space for my dad this is my dad's thought process he's missing having his space he's missing having you know the flexibility to be able to bring somebody in whenever he feels like it to blast his music to have his house the way he left it it's like really hitting that especially now that my brother is back from college and he's just like you know i i like that y'all are here and y'all, y'all are a big help to me but y'all can't stay in that one room like that for too long it's gonna it's gonna start to be a lot on y'all and he is right like because you know, there's a lot of needs that my daughters have, and I haven't really been taking care of myself outside of this situation right here with me getting the gym membership, which is, oh, it's heaven sent, y'all. I feel like I'm finally breathing. I feel like it's not the situation with the court and my ex fiance. I feel like, you know, I've always said that I've just, I'm waiting for this situation to be over so I can breathe, but I feel like I'm getting the breath back right now by taking care of myself and focusing on my self-care like a lot more like this gym membership just these two days has opened up some shit for me i've been working out i've been going to get my massage after i work out and it has just been working for me so he was just like yeah you know y'all can't be cooped up in that room like that for too long because you know it's gonna be a little bit much and again i was like yeah you know you're right because my daughters are you know growing it's summertime growth spurts they're starting to need things. We don't have a lot of space for me to constantly keep buying stuff. But at the same time, these are growing children. So I kind of have to buy things and it's messing with the the space issues as far as where we can put clothes and all this stuff like that and all the things that they need. It is starting to kind of like become a little tight in the room or whatever. So I'm like, yeah, you know, I definitely miss my independence. I definitely miss having my own space and he was like who don't I know it (laughs) and I mean I get it I get it my dad's older you know he has all his kids are grown so it's like you know I should be able to live my life and do for me but I'm out here helping y'all still I'm still doing stuff for y'all and it's like I know it's not no bad blood I know it's not it's it's however it's probably coming off with me saying it that's not how he means it so I get that but um, I don't know. It's just, it started making me think. And I was just like, damn, I just got my gym membership. And <laughs> with my gym membership, it's working out because I get up early and I go to the gym and I leave the kids at the house because somebody's going to be at the house. But now, <laughs> now you telling me this and I'm just like, okay, I have no problem with getting my own space, especially for the, the cost of how much these apartments are. And I've already mapped it out in my head, you know what I'm saying, as far as, okay, if it's if it's just a two-bedroom, then the kids are going to get a bedroom apiece. And then um, my, my bedroom will pretty much be the living room. Like, I've already come to terms with how I want to fix everything if we were to get into these apartments over there or whatever. But... I was like, damn, the gym. Like, how am I going to get to the gym? I just got this freaking membership. <laughs> and mind you, the membership that I got, there's no commitment. Like, I can cancel it anytime type shit. But still, like, I just started taking care of myself. And it, I'm not going to lie. I understood what he was saying, but it did kind of rub me the wrong way a little bit because I was just like, damn, like, this is kind of fucked up (laughs) but it's not because it's his space and i get it so it's like i get it but i'm just like ah another thing 
So I let him know. I was just like, well, you know, if it's meant to be, it'll be. I have no problem going over there. I said, I already went over there with my brother when we had to help him get in his place because he locked himself out. Um, I walked in his space. I looked around and I kind of remember what it looked like from when my dad used to live there or whatever. And I was just like, you know, let me get familiar again. So we went, I went into my brother's apartment and just walked around. I was like, okay, I see what's going on here. I was like, it ain't too bad in here. I was like, it's not, of course, the amount of space I really need. But at the same time, if it if I needed to work for me, I'm going to make it work for me um, and my girls. So I told my dad, I was like, well, at this point with me still paying off these other bills from this old, um, the old house or whatever, I'm still, I still got like maybe one or two bills that are lagging that I'm still trying to catch up on and, and finish paying off. Um, but I was like, you know, give me until my next paycheck. And if you want me to, you know, move or whatever if you talk to the lady and she got a place that's ready like now then I will go ahead and I will me and the girls will move in I don't have no problem doing that um and I talked to my brother about it my brother was just like don't feel like you need to rush he was like the same conversations that you know he's having with you right now I heard it all my life and he was just like you know I'm just telling you from experience don't feel like you need to rush out of this house is like if you need to get you know I don't know your finances or nothing like that and I'm not asking but if you feel like you need to get yourself together and have everything straight before you leave then just make sure that you get everything together don't don't take what he's saying to heart because he really needs the help and I was like yeah I was like I understand that and I get it but at the same time I was like I don't want to constantly keep hearing from him ever so often that he wants his space because we're in a really good place right now. Like the relationship between me and my dad has been really good. It's been really positive. We've learned how to live with each other, work around each other. We've learned each other's, you know, particulars in a sense to the point of just us being able to coexist around each other with me and my kids and stuff. And um, everything's been pretty good. So I've been chilling. It's, like I said, it's just ever so often, it's like he forgets that we've had this conversation or that he said he didn't want us to go over there. Now he does want us to go over there. And I'm like, it's cool. I understood what my brother said, but at the same time, if my dad feels like he can get more help out of these women because he's a man and he wants to have these women come over to his house and not always leave his, his place, you know what I'm saying? and go to their house, then it is what it is. I understand. I'm not trying to rain on his parade or nothing. My dad is grown. He ain't got no responsibilities like that. I mean, of course he has his old, his older adult children, but he ain't got no responsibilities like that. He ain't got no little kids or nothing like that. So he can definitely do as he please. And I feel like if I feel, I know that's not a gentleman's club. Okay. <laughs> if I feel like we're in the way of you know, him just doing him. If there's something that's available that I feel like is feasible and I feel like it's safe and I feel like we're gonna have a good time, I have no problem doing it. I have absolutely no problem doing it. Um, and I will definitely sit with this decision. I need to go up to my higher ups and have some conversations about this decision because again, I'm ready to move. I'm ready. <laughs> yesterday i'm ready three months ago right <laughs> it ain't even been three months with me being my dad's house but i'm i'm ready but i don't want to jump into something prematurely and mess a lot of stuff up for myself or for my kids um so i'm also thinking about that as well my brother's like you keep saying you know because i'm here that you know maybe you should look into a place he said but he's not factoring in that I'm getting ready to leave. Like I'll be going back to college in a minute and I'm getting ready to leave in July. He's like, it's June now, but I'm getting ready to go back in July. So I won't even be here and it'll, you can go back in that room. The kids can be in that room, whatever, what have you. And I was like, yeah, you're right. But again, I don't want to keep constantly here. <laughs> Somebody say, Hey, you need to go. Hey, you looking into something or whatever. Um, I still have, uh, good intentions as as it pertains to trying to get in contact with the people about section eight to see if whatever I signed up for was something different and it wasn't necessarily section eight or just like the, the housing choice voucher. Um, I can also use my resources with the VA and possibly go through that 
So I want to do a lot of things. I want to exhaust all my other possibilities before I just jump head first into, you know, hey, this is what I'm about to do. Um, I'm about to just move out. I like the fact that it is down the street from my dad. It's really not far. It's like not even five minutes away from where my dad lives. But at the same time, I don't want to put too much of a strain or stress on myself. That's the big thing. I don't want to put too much on myself to do it, what it is I need to do. Um, but other than that, outside of that, everything's been going well. Again, like I said, I need to really go to my higher ups with this situation and just have a good conversation and just listen to whatever is brought to me to do, um, whatever is guided for me to do. I'm going to definitely listen to listen to my spiritual guidance. And I know that everything is going to happen in divine timing. So I'm not tripping. But yeah, that's pretty much what's going on right now. <laughs> that's pretty much what's going on right now. I'm getting ready to go in this house. I just pulled up to the crib. I'm getting ready to go in the house. Get ready to make some breakfast for these babies. Because that's what I did yesterday when we came back. Like I said, I was tired, but I had shit to do. So I'm getting here, make this breakfast for these kids. And uh, I'm just going to relax until they wake up. The other day, they didn't wake up to almost like 10 o'clock. And we got back at like 7. So I'm really enjoying the fact that me getting up early, even though it's me having to wake myself up, I am enjoying the fact that this is my time. You know, I don't have a lot of time away from my kids or whatever. And this right here is definitely my time to do me and to, you know, meditate drink some coffee, whatever the hell it is that I want to do. If I want to sit in my car and just sit in this bitch and just stare, I could do that as well. And I might do that for a few minutes just to, you know, see if I can give me some spiritual guidance while I'm in here. I might just do that as well before I go in this house, child, because I know the kids ain't up, baby. It's, it's just almost 730. That's it. Um, But yeah, outside of that, like I said, I feel good. I feel positive. I feel like I'm moving in the right direction. As far as with my self-care, everything that I said that I wanted to do, that I wanted to manifest while I'm here, um, I've started to do it. I've, I mean, a lot of my manifestations have already come into fruition. The big, big things are still in the works, but a lot of the little things that I was like, this is really, really important to me because it's, it's a bonding situation between me and my kids that stuff has happened and I'm very thankful for that um and hopefully fingers crossed if everything goes well um if not tomorrow I know there's like a movie coming out pretty soon I want to take my girls to the movies so we can go see a nice little movie I think they got the uh five dollar Mondays where you get in any movie for five dollars so definitely gonna take advantage of that since I ain't gotta pay for the little bitty baby just be me and big girl but yes I am enjoying doing all of the things that I said I was going to do or, or doing the things that I was like, I really hope I get the opportunity to do this. I really hope I get the opportunity to, you know, have this moment or do this thing or do that thing. Like shit has been coming together and I am so proud of my strength. I'm so proud of my ability to take accountability and Put my pride to the side. You know, I was listening to somebody yesterday say something about, you know, when you go to help somebody, why would you go to help them? Because it could possibly be the reason why that they're in the predicament that they're in is because they're dealing with their karma, right? Their their karma is is, is basically dealing with them and, and giving them what they deserve. And you are coming in trying to help them and you are messing up their karma, which in turn is giving you some of their karma because you shouldn't be messing with them at all. And I feel like, I feel like with the people that I have surrounded myself with, I have definitely found myself wrapped up in their karma and being hit by shit that was supposed to just be meant for them. But the things that are happening to me right now, I wholeheartedly feel like because I wrap myself up in somebody else's karma and not only myself, but I got other beings wrapped up in it as well. I don't feel like what I'm personally going through is my karma. I feel like what I'm personally going through is just my way to finally get out and my car again, finally get out of the situation and begin to rebuild my life and start over. Like I've been saying this whole entire time, this is just a foundation reset. I've been trying to build all these different foundations with these other people 
and it wasn't meant to happen because they were dealing with their own karmas and then they needed to rebuild their own foundation and they couldn't do that shit by themselves either so they were trying to rebuild with me or basically build up their shitty foundation and try to merge it with mine which wasn't always that good or whatever to begin with either but I mean shit I was doing a lot more work than they were doing on self in order to have a solid you know steady piece of foundation and they saw that and they latched onto that shit and then I got wrapped up in their karma and it is what it is so I can definitely see how I got wrapped up in other people's shit and especially when I knew I should have let go and I didn't let go I can definitely see that but I feel like what's happening for me is the fact that I was able to get out of those situations. I was protected enough and watched over enough for my people to be like, here's your way out. This is the only way you can get out. You got to do this. Now it's going to suck. It really is. But if you want to truly start anew and start fresh, you have to realize all these different things that you're doing and you need to change in order to really build your foundation from scratch and build it a good solid foundation and now with the knowledge that I know I understand that I'm not messing with nobody else's karma (laughs) I am not fucking with nobody else's karma I don't feel like I have any karma or bad blood or anything for coming towards me that I need to go through a whole bunch of trials and tribulations because I just can't get right it's not even that for me I feel like now it's just time for me to step into my my time of abundance and I can't take all these other people with me because they're not meant to go with me And a lot of times when we take other people with us, um, we won't get what we deserve because those people don't deserve what we're supposed to get. So we're just delaying our progress and delaying our good graces because we keep in all these other people around who don't deserve to be there when we get to the level of success that we need to be at. And you'll never be successful because that person is there. You'll never be able to walk through certain doors because that person is there. Um, So I have shed all of the people and all of the things and all of the judgment and all of the embarrassment, I've shed everything in order to start anew. And I don't have any qualms about anything. I'm just trying to start new. So I hope that is the same for you. Like I said, I'm getting ready to go in this house, make this breakfast real quick. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for showing up for yourself. I love you. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. Thank you for showing up for yourself, but thank you for showing up for me. Because you could be anywhere watching anybody, but you're here watching me. And I'm very thankful for that. I love you. Take care of yourself, drink your water, and mind your goddamn business. (sighs) I fucking love you, bruh.